All right, hello everybody. Um, welcome to this demo on how to use Screencastify and set up other Chrome extensions in your Chrome browser. The first thing that we wanna do, if you don't know how to get Screencastify, I wanna show you how to do that first. So you'll notice up here at the top, these are the extensions that I have installed in Chrome right now. And this one is the one for Screencastify. If you don't see your extensions, you can also click on this puzzle icon right here, and that will show you the extensions that you have installed. If you don't have any extensions or you don't have Screencastify, what you want to do is just open up another web browser and type in Chrome Store. And you can go to the Chrome Store. And this is where you see all of the extensions that you can add to Chrome. And what you want to do is simply type in screen Castify. Hit enter. And there you go. You're going to click on screen Castify. And yours will say, if you don't have it already, it will say add to Chrome. If it says remove from Chrome like this, it means you already have it installed. And then to pin it to the taskbar, you just hit the puzzle icon and then find where it is and click the little pin icon to pin it and unpin it from your taskbar. And that's all there is to it. You can add the extension for Edpuzzle. You can add the extensions for other programs or other apps such as your Bitmoji. And it's really simple and easy to do. Okay, so let's give this a go. I'm going to point out a few features in Screencastify, how they work, and then I will do a quick demonstration lesson here for something that I might do in my theater class. Uh, one of the things that we often find as a challenge in the visual and performing arts classes and in other electives really, and in classes like PE, is that we often find ourselves having to demonstrate a physical activity or a, a, a concrete physical technique to students. And in order to do that, we might bring up an assistant or a more veteran or experienced student who can demonstrate the technique while we point out certain things. So we're not being both the, the model and the teacher at the same time. And that's kind of tricky to do in distance learning. Sometimes you don't have those things available to you. So Screencastify can really help us out here where we can shoot a video ahead of time of the technique itself or the concepts themselves. And then we can record the teaching of them on our webcam after the fact and put those two things together. So that's what I'm gonna do here. We have this video, I put it in Drive already. I recorded it ahead of time. And I am going to fire up Screencastify. When you do that, you're going to get this little box. And the first thing you want to do is identify what you are going to be recording from. You can either record from a browser tab, which is basically like what this is, a browser tab. You can record from your whole desktop, which in this case is the exact same thing because I have my browser tab set to full screen. But if you wanted to re record full screen, that's the desktop, which is what I'm going to do. Or you can record just from your webcam. Down here, you have to set your microphone. If you have multiple microphone possibilities, you have to identify for Screencastify, which is the one you want. So it's a pull down menu. I've identified my headset microphone and I can see that the signal's coming through nice and clearly here by the VU audio meter over here going up and down. This is a toggle switch, just like a light switch. You can click it to turn it on or off. Same thing here, you have to identify what your webcam is. I only have one, so I'm gonna be using this webcam. Turn that on or off. And underneath, you have more options. So the countdown, you can give yourself a three second or a five second or a 10 second countdown ahead of time, just so that you can relax a little bit before it starts recording. Set it to whatever you like. You can turn off or on the drawing tools the tools like a pen or an eraser or uh, different features of your mouse. I like to turn those on so I have them available to me. Then underneath here, you're gonna see system audio. If the video you're recording has audio already embedded in it and you would like to use that audio, then turn this on. If not, turn it off. So I'm gonna leave it off because I don't want the audio here. 
it's another benefit of using Screencastify, I think. If you're recording outside and there was wind noise and background noise, you can get rid of all of that by adding the teaching, the narration, after the fact. And then don't turn, turn on system audio. It's entirely up to you. If you click on the browser tab, you'll see you have the same thing. It just says tab audio, but it's the same. If what's on your web browser has audio, turn that on if you want to use it. If not, turn it off. Before we hit record, just want to point out a couple of things here. One, in settings, under advanced settings, the, the little gear icon, most of the time you can leave this stuff alone, but I would encourage you to limit the resolution of your final video to something that is a little bit more manageable for students to watch. I know we live in a high def world and we like to have our fancy high def video, but students watching our videos on a Wi-Fi connection they're not going to be able to handle uh, a large high def video. So crank it down a little bit. Uh, 480p, I think, is a nice medium between quality and file size. So just click it to there. And then over here, the three bars, just like you're probably used to in most programs, if you see three bars or three dots or the waffle, that means that you have extra features. And here you can see you can access all of your recordings. You can access other options, the editor. You can switch your account and sign out. That's all here. So then I look at all my settings and I decide that I am ready to record. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is actually record the lesson itself as if I am teaching the lesson. So I'm going to get out of Screencastify demo mode for just a little bit. I will still come back and explain all of the things that I did, but I just wanted you to be able to see them in action as well. Okay. All right, my theater students, it's time to learn about body positions on stage. We have different uh, terminology for how actors face in relationship to the audience. And we have these special terms so that a director can communicate to the actor really clearly about where they want their actor to, to go or to how to stand in terms of how they face the audience. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like you to do, and we're just going to go through here and Watch this for, oh, look at that. Who is that handsome assistant right there? <laughs> and I have an extra assistant. I got my cat. Um, all right. So the first thing that uh, you should do is draw for yourself in your notes a circle. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that myself with my pen tool. And I'll put the circle up here so that you can that you can see it. Maybe I'll pick a color that's not green, so it's a, a little bit more visible. So if you draw a circle, and I imagine the circle that my assistant there just drew uh, in space is we're now looking that, at that angle from above. What you're going to do then is draw like the hands of a clock, except not quite so many. What I'd like you to, to do is split that circle in half and then in half again this way. Again, remember, we're looking at a circle that would be on the ground. We're looking at it from above. And then, just like we're slicing a pizza, if you would please draw that and... I did a bad job there, so I'm gonna erase my line and draw a little bit of a better line right like that. Okay, so I basically have eight positions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Right, assistant? Is that what we're talking about here? From the front, and from the back, and from the side, and from the other side, and then we're dividing in the middle all the way around, which gives us eight total, right? So you should all have that in your notes right now. A circle, you got your pizza slice, with eight slices and eight different directions on the ground. Cool. Everybody with us so far? We're doing all right. Okay. So we're going to work on these. Uh, work on these one at a time. 
this first one, which is right here, okay, that's called full front. This one towards the back is called full back, okay, full front. Now this one is profile left, full front, profile right. Let's pause here for just a sec. We learned about stage left and stage right. Remember that it's always the left and the right as the actor is facing the audience. So if we say stage left, it's the actor's left facing the audience. That's why this over here is profile left, even though it's on the right side of your screen. Okay, it's, it's one of the things when you're starting to work in the theater that's a little bit, uh, a little bit wonky, right? You have to get used to it. Okay, so where's my assistant gonna go now? All right, so now we're in between. We're on this, this line right here. This is called quarter left. Okay, it's a great position to use if we're gonna talk to another person on stage. This, pers this over here is called quarter right. Also a good position for talking to someone on stage. Full front. These are the open positions. Full front and quarter left and quarter right. If a director tells you to cheat out, okay, or cheat to the audience, what that director's telling you is basically is to kind of to take one of these quarter positions here so that you can still interact with the person that you're talking to on stage, but the audience can still see you. The open positions, one of these three in the front. The ones to the back, the two ones on the profile. We don't see enough of you. Look at this amazing acting. You can't see any of it because we're in a closed position. Okay, so let's just review that. The open positions are here. The closed positions are the profile, the, the three quarter positions on either side and the one in the back. Those are the closed positions. Thank you, assistant. You did a fine job. Okay, so that's basically how I might go about creating a, a, a lesson for my students. And then I'm gonna erase it right there. Okay, so you saw uh, most of the tools there in action uh, already. I'm just going to point them out a little bit more explicitly so that you can um, that you can uh, see them. So first off, uh, if you wanted to pause the recording mid recording for whatever reason, you got interrupted or you you sneezed in the middle there or you accidentally said a curse word, whatever, just pause the recording. Okay, you can pause it at any time. And if you're done, you can end the recording right there. Uh, if you Notice the end recording doesn't appear until you pause it, right? If I hit play to resume recording, I'm recording now again. It's, whoa, where's the stop button? How do I stop? You gotta pause before you stop. So it's a, it, that takes just a little bit of getting used to. Uh, over here, I have the mouse pointer. So that's just the, the, the pointer for the mouse, okay? Uh, I have some different features. If you noticed, I used the focus mouse feature in my lesson there. Basically what that does is it dims the rest of the screen, gives us a little spotlight so I can really zero in on something I wanna show my students. Turn that off again. Uh, this feature right here, hide cursor when not moved. Basically when my cursor is moving, we can see it, which is what we want. And when I don't move it, it disappears, which is also usually what we want, okay? A good, good feature to turn on. And then this last one is called um, highlight clicks, which basically means that every time I click the mouse, you're gonna see a little red radar ping, just like that, okay? So every time I click the screen, we get a little radar ping like that. Cool, so that is also a good feature. You can turn that on or off as you like. The pen tool is right here. 
you saw me use the color slider. So pick any color that you want. And you can then left click and drag to draw whatever you want on, on the screen. And then the eraser tool will just erase whatever you want to erase. Now, if you're looking for fancier features, like can I change the size of the pen and other things that you might be used to in other programs, Screencastify is pretty stripped down for a reason. It's, you know, it's browser-based editing, so it can't have all the features that you might want. But there are enough features for you to get the job done, right? If the job is to really just annotate a, um, a lesson, this is everything that you need. You need a pen, an eraser, uh, and a way to draw your students' attention to something. Uh, you can embed the web webcam. You can turn that on or off here. And you can show or hide the tools with that button right there. So let's say I am done. And uh, wipe screen clear is a you didn't have to I didn't have to do that whole erasing by hand. I could I can use the wipe screen clear right there. So let's say I'm done for right now and I'm going to hit the pause button and then I'm going to end my recording. Now, remember, I'm demonstrating for you. So I would have ended it earlier when I actually ended the lesson. OK, so I'm going to hit end recording and then you're going to get this pop up right here. So this is going to show you your video. OK, this is now the video that we just recorded. You're probably noticing that the audio is out of sync. That's because the webcam audio that you're seeing right here, that audio, that's, and you're not hearing it because I have it on mute. OK, that audio is now the recorded lesson. That was the lesson that was recorded right there. So I'm going to hit pause right there. You'll notice over here in the top right hand corner that that video is now saving to drive. That's a feature that you can't stop. You might think, wait a minute, I didn't edit it yet. Why is it already saving? It's just that's what it does so that we can work with it. Down here, you can copy to get a shareable link, you know, to share in an email or in your Google Classroom stream if you want. You can upload your video directly to Classroom or to YouTube. Um, but we haven't edited it yet, so I, I'm not going to upload until I edit it. If uh, you don't see the upload to Edpuzzle, it just means that you have to turn that on. So turn on more options, and then you're going to have more share options. If you click on this, you'll see a toggle to turn on upload to Edpuzzle. So you can upload your video directly to Edpuzzle. Okay. So I'm going to now open up this video in this editor, and you're going to get this. Please wait until the recording has been uploaded to Drive. So it's just um, a feature. You have to wait until this process right here finishes before you can then edit it. Okay, and I'll probably speed this up in in the final video so that you don't have to sit through um, watching progress bars. I will spare you that. All right, it is now saved to drive. So I can open it in the editor. You're gonna get this window right here. Ready to make some magic with our editor? Oh yes, I am. Indeed I am. Okay, so this is now the editor view where this, here's your video the one that you just recorded with Screencastify. Okay, so it has the original video. It has the webcam on top of it. Down here, this is the timeline where you can see your project from beginning to end. In the bottom right-hand corner, this is a zoom slider. All it does is it shows me my footage. It kind of zooms in or not, okay, depending on what we want to see. This button down here is where you can add an extra video clip if you wanted to add something else like say an animated background and you wanted to put uh, a title on it. In fact, why don't we do that right now? Let's add an extra clip and we'll put it, put it right there at the beginning. So add a clip, you can add it from, you can upload it directly or you can add it from Drive. So I'm gonna go to my Screencastify and what I wanna do is I wanna find this one that I uploaded earlier so I'm going to select that one, and it's going to get a little bit of a processing there. Again, I'll probably speed that up if I need to. All right, and there is the extra clip. So let's 
drag the extra clip instead to the beginning. I can trim off some of the beginning if I like. Okay, it's where I can trim it right to the part where it um, it started. Okay, so I can play this. So this is now another video clip that I added with this button down here in the bottom right hand corner. So this would be a good place for me to put a title right now. So I'm going to add a a title and uh, I might call this one body positions. Okay, so you have some title options. You can make it bold. You can italicize it. You can underline it. You can change the color of the text. I'll say make it white. And you can change the color of the box. But if you're going to use the box, what you want to do is just add a couple of spaces on either side so that the box actually looks good. So if I have white, I might want to do, say, a black background like that. And I can change the font. I don't have many choices, but it's enough. Say I like that one. And I could make it normal. I could make it large. I could make it huge. Yeah, let's do huge. I can now justify the text on the left or center it or on the right. And then the last thing that I can do is I can um, I can move it to a different position. I can't drag it to a specific spot. That feature isn't available, but I can certainly put it at the bottom of the screen or in the middle uh, or at the top. Okay, so in this case, I might decide that I like it in the middle. All right, and down here in the bottom right-hand corner, if I want the title to exist longer, there it is. Now, if you're trying for fancy transitions for the title animating on, you're not going to have that. But again, it's not a it's not a full video editor. It's really just um, it's it's designed for screen capturing. So it's really really simple. But here at least we can have a cool background, and I can see this is taking way too long. So I'm just going to I'm going to trim it by left clicking and dragging. Okay, I don't want to waste too much time with this title. Let's I'm clicking over here, hitting the space bar, and body positions. And that's really all I need, right? So I'm just going to trim it way back, trim that way back. And now body positions. Cool. The title goes away and we start our video. Cool. So uh, the big feature I want to show you here is uh, you have the ability to crop your video clip. So what I really don't want to do is I don't want to show students, I don't want to show students the drawing tools. I don't want to show students the, all this stuff, all this browser stuff. The interesting part is this video. And maybe I don't even want to show them the the bottom of, the, of this window, but maybe my feet are going to get caught off. I don't know. I'm, let's just crop it. So I have it selected. See the yellow outline around it. And I'm going to grab the crop tool. And I'm just going to crop all this unnecessary stuff off. And then I hit done down here in the bottom right. And now my video is nice and cropped. Cool. Cool. So um, so then it goes forward. It has the, the drawings that I already did on it with the focus mouse. Um, you might be wondering, where's the pen tool? Remember, the pen tool was in the recording part earlier. This is the editing part. You don't have that available. But you still do have a, you do have a couple of things. One, you can, um, you can zoom in. Let's say there's a part right here where I want to just zoom in on, zoom in on this guy uh, or I don't know. Just pick a spot, click it, and hit zoom. And you're going to get this box where you can zoom in to right a closer, uh, closer position, like that. And over here in the in the 
uh, on the side, on the right, you're gonna see the transition speed to go from that full screen to the, to the middle screen. It takes a half a second. You can change that if you want it faster. If you want the zoomed in part to stay on screen longer, you can just left click and drag it so it stays zoomed in for longer. Okay, so if I hit, hit spacebar, Yeah, cool. Okay, not not doing great editing here. Just just to demonstrate that you have that tool available to you, and then and then we already did we already did the title tool, which is this one right here. And then if you want to delete something, you can uh, hit the trash icon. If there's a part in the middle of the clip that you want to get out, you know, for instance, say you wanted to get rid of that part of the cat. You could do that. Uh, I don't. I want to keep the cat. So I'm just going to pick a spot in here randomly. I hit the scissors tool, and that turns this into two clips, which I can then trim in either direction and get rid of the, the part, whatever part I, I don't want. I'm going to hit undo to undo that because I want it all back. OK, so now I have my my finished video, and this is what I want to I want to export. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And maybe I'm going to trim off the part where I'm going to trim it to the point where Okay, to the end of the I'm going to find the end of the lesson. Not the part where I'm talking to you, my students today, but my my students, my theater students, this as who this is for. And I would just pull it back to that to that point and then just have that. So it's just now the lesson that I want to show my students. So I'm going to hit export. And I'm going to hit export to Google Drive. And I'll call this one body test number four. And you're going to get another processing video. This is going to take a while. You know, it's just a five minute video, but it does it does take a bit. And I will try and spare you that. One thing that I want to point out, though, right away is you're going to get this share button right now. If you click on this one right now, you're only going to get the option to get a link that you can share. And if you share it right away, then people might click on the link and they're just going to see a processing window. So it's better to wait until the processing part is finished. And you're going to get another choice that's going to appear here. So we're just going to speed up time a little bit right now and go to the end of this processing part. OK, so now it's all finished. And you see, you get another option right here. So I'm going to hit the view, and that's going to launch the app. And that gets me back to this screen that we had before, only this is now the edited video. It's muted at the moment. This is right. This is what we called it. And we are set to share to Classroom, publish to YouTube, or in this case, I want to upload to Edpuzzle. So let's say I don't want my students just to watch the video, but answer questions as they go or listen to uh, other notes that I might have, which is another good feature of Edpuzzle. So I'm going to upload this video to Edpuzzle by clicking that button right there. Now, this part also takes a little while. You've got some uploading to do by clicking on Google Drive. And I'm going to spare you this as well. Uh, like I said, the process of uploading to Edpuzzle and then Edpuzzle does a whole preparing process. It does take a little while, even with a short video. So you just have to be patient. Just go get another cup of coffee or whatever you need to do. And then you come back and it'll be ready to go here just with all your other content that you've created using other people's videos. Now, this is now one from a video that you made yourself. Let's uh, let's click on it and you can assign it right away if you want to, or you can ask the uh, questions that you want to ask. So you just hit edit right here and then you're going to get this, this window right here, which basically allows you to play it in the way that um, students will, will experience it. And then you can add cuts you can um, add in your questions. So, you know, let's say, for example, 
we got to this point in the video and then we ask a question. Okay, so we hit hit questions, multiple co uh, uh, choice questions. What is this body position called? And then all you have to do is um, uh, put in however many choices you want for the how many, if it's multiple choice, how many possible answers there are. You want to make sure that you identify one as the correct one so that you can allow Edpuzzle to grade it. So right, we're going to call this one full front. And we'll then we'll come up with some plausible ones that are not the correct answer. Right, and then you all you have to do is hit save, and then hit continue. Make sure it's identified right as the correct one, and you hit continue. Maybe you decide, oh, he, he says the answer right after, so maybe you want to put the question a little bit later or a little bit earlier. You can move the questions, and you can ask as many questions as you as you want. So I'm not going to bore you and repeat that process. You can also uh, you can also cut the video. You can add a voiceover into the video. You can uh, draw on the video in uh, all in Edpuzzle. And then when you're done, all you have to do is hit finish. And then you want to decide whether it's going to be public or private. That's down here in the bottom. I'm going to make this one private because it's just a kind of a test thing. Um, and then you can hit assign and actually assign it directly to a Google Classroom. I'm not going to do that because otherwise my students are going to freak out and think they have a, an Edpuzzle to do. And it's really that simple. And if you've made it all multiple choice questions, then Edpuzzle will actually do the grading for you, which is a really, really great feature. And then finally, if you wanted to complete the loop, right, the loop of that begins with a teacher wanting to teach concepts, teaching them, demonstrating them, assessing, right, checking for knowledge, and then the ultimate assessment is really them being able to do it and really ultimately being able to teach somebody else. And maybe you would use another app like Flipgrid for that, where they then make a video of themselves going, say, through the body positions that they just learned, or in a Flipgrid video, teaching someone else, a brand new person who's never heard these terms before, teaching them how those work, and then the, the cycle completes.